we have got to get a handle on. I was privileged when I worked for Senator Salazar to, to receive uh, federal benefits, the same benefits as our member of, members of Congress. And I'll tell you what, they are good benefits. Now that I, I don't work for the federal government anymore, we have another plan that costs us twice as much, the deductibles are, are higher, and the benefits are not as good. Why can't everyone have access to the same plan that your representatives in, in Congress are able to get? Yes, we need to provide affordable health care, preventive health care for everyone in this country. Over 20% of our health care costs are associated with administrative costs. We need to turn that around. And one of the first things that we need to do is start standardizing our forms. We also know that 75% of health care costs are attributable to chronic diseases like heart disease, cancer, diabetes. When we don't have people seeking preventive care, we're spending so much money on the back end. And who's paying for all of this? Uh, we had an employee, one of our campaign employees, was rushed to the hospital, to the emergency room, a couple of weeks ago. In the line in front of him was a woman who had a toothache. She didn't, have dental, she didn't have health insurance, didn't have dental insurance, but it got to the point where she couldn't take it anymore, so she went to the emergency room. That is the most, the most expensive, unsustainable, and highly inefficient way to provide health care in this country, and we're all paying for it. Right now, we are spending almost 16% of our gross national product on health care in this country, and yet, we have 48 million people uninsured, another estimated 50 million people underinsured. Many people are only one medical emergency away from a bankruptcy. And this is a time, we are at a time in our history when small business, doctors, hospitals, nurses are all clamoring for change. And I would like to see a new Congress and a new administration take the bull by the horns in January of 2009 and create a system that is uniquely American in nature, covers everyone, and leaves no segment of the population behind. Um, we're kind of running a little bit out of time, so I'm going to cap you to a couple of minutes on this question from Michael Callahan, who's a graduate student here at Colorado State University, worked as a drilling engineer for ExxonMobil for a number of years. His question is, how specifically will the candidates make America energy independent within 10 years? Ms. Markey, a couple of minutes, do you think, on that? Okay. I think that this is a priority once again for the for a new Congress and administration to develop a 10-year plan to have three goals. Number one, reduce our dependence on foreign oil. Number two, protect our environment. And number three, create new jobs in a green energy economy. And we can get there if we put the best minds at the table. You know, when I worked in Washington, D.C. many years ago, it seems like a lifetime ago, um, in the late 1970s and early 80s, and I remember when we were facing a crisis in Social Security, and President Reagan and Tip O'Neill, who was the Democratic Speaker of the House at the time, said, let's put our policy differences aside. Let's bring all the best and the brightest minds to the table and figure this problem out. And they did. President Kennedy did the same thing with the, with the space program. If you want to have bold ideas, you cannot be consumed by all the pettiness of the politics of the day. Let's put our differences aside and work together as Americans to reduce our dependence on foreign oil. And again, we can get there. We need to, of course, make sure that we are, 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 are drilling. We're drilling responsibly. There are pl plenty of uh, the acres of land right now that oil and gas companies um, have leases to. Let's pursue that. We've got untapped resources for natural gas, particularly here in the 4th Congressional District in Weld County and in Yuma County. Let's pursue that. And let's make sure that we are harnessing the energy of the wind here in, in eastern Colorado. I was at uh, Pete's Wind Farm a couple of weeks ago. Uh, Pete's has the largest wind farm in, in the state. It's just north of, of Sterling. And I was talking to a farmer who said, you know, I get, I've got 11 wind turbines on my property. I get a check from Excel for almost $10,000 every year. I'm just for having the turbines on my property, and I can still graze my cattle underneath. It's a great economic development tool, particularly for our rural communities that are struggling. 
And we can get there. Once again, we can get there if we put the, our best and brightest minds to it. There's incredible research being done here at CSU. I mentioned the Smart Grid Project, uh, biodiesel. Agriculture wants to be part of the solution as, as well. But I believe that if we, if we are serious about this problem, we will make our country stronger in the long run. We saw the power of the internet a decade ago. I think the power of renewable energy will be even stronger.